to another frame devotional where the words of God is our sole authority. Let us pray. Dearest Lord, we thank you so much for the loss that you experienced and the pain you endured just so we could gain the invaluable eternal gift of salvation. We thank you, God, from the depths of our soul for the greater purpose that you accomplished through your pain. Amen. Losing a loved one is probably one of the most if not the absolute most painful experience a person can have. The days and the years following can crush you under a mountain of what I should have done and could have done. It gets worse when you're confused about what and how it happened. Then anger can take over from the pain as you try to make sense of what you're feeling. But there is something magical about transferring that pain into productivity. This is a gift of mining your purpose from your pain and giving through the loss. Job understood his purpose as a praiser, hence Job 13 verse 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even so, I will defend my own ways before him. The Lakota Indians giveaway ceremony is an exercise in releasing pain and embracing purpose. Following the death of a loved one, the members of the family begin immediately to plan this giveaway ceremony. And during that year, the family literally spends time and money making the gifts that they intend to offer to the community. Their belief was that the spirit of the dead person was contained and had to be cared for during the year. But at the end of the year, it was time for it to be released. And this release could only happen if the family held this giveaway ceremony. It was a kind of transfer of grief to service. Most of the items were made by members of the family in addition to those that belonged to the deceased. Their religious tradition prescribed gift giving as the only appropriate manner to commemorate the dead and release the spirit. In so doing, they replaced the hopelessness that can come from losing a loved one with service. They gave even in their loss and found purpose for their pain. As 2 Corinthians 8 verse 2 says, In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. In 2 Samuel 12, we read of Nathan confronting David about his act of sleeping with Uriah's wife, then murdering the man so he could marry the then pregnant Bathsheba. God was angry and determined that the child from this sordid affair would die. David, who had a really special relationship with God, went into fasting and prayer. 2 Samuel 12 verse 16 reads, David therefore pleaded with God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night on the ground. His prayers were no doubt sincere and earnest, but on the seventh day, the child died. Like any concerned family members and friend, the servants were afraid to tell him this as they were not sure how he would take it. They even suggested that he might go crazy and do some harm to himself. David saw them whispering and figured out that something had happened. So he pressed them, tell me what has happened. The child is dead, they told him. Verse 20 just seemed to drop in the scriptures from heaven. It is what I call a living in the daybreak moment, looking past the night and the darkness and standing firm on the truth that day will break, night will pass, sadness will give way to an eternal joy. 2 Samuel 12 verse 20 reads, So David arose from the ground, washed and anointed himself, and changed his clothes, and he went into the house of the Lord and worshipped. Then he went to his own house, and when he requested, they set food before him, 
and he ate. I know that this scarcely makes sense. When was the mourning and the grief? Did he just pass over the loss of the child as if it didn't happen? Is this really the essence of finding purpose in pain, ignoring our emotions? Absolutely not. Let's look at how David explained his response to the pain of losing his child. And no doubt he was concerned about how Bathsheba was taking the loss. He explained that he petitioned God for mercy and God said no, as was his right to do, because he is sovereign and that he would accept God's decision because he said, I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. There is something else after this pain. It was a hope that David had in the resurrection. David gave through his pain. He gave worship and praise to God, and God gave him comfort, comfort for himself, comfort for Bathsheba, and then Solomon chosen to sit on his throne. Accepting God's will in our life is healing and it opens us up to receiving more from him. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us that God's favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Choosing to still give praise and worship is not negating the pain from a loss. Instead, it is validating that the loss is great, but God can restore. The Lakota tribe planned a whole year to offer gifts to the community after their loss. And David, he immediately offered his praise after his loss. Praise and worship are gifts we offer to God who deserves more praise than we could ever give. The hardest time to offer this gift is in the moments of grief and sadness. But this time is the defining moment of our journey. Many persons have established scholarships, foundations, charitable giving, planted a tree, adopted or joined a charitable foundation, just many ways to honor their loved ones. And these are great gestures. But the greatest still is a gift of continued praise and worship. The act of finding personal purpose in pain because you continue to trust that God is good. You trust that whatever your God allows in your life will work towards fulfilling his perfect will for you and your loved ones. But you must be open to giving to receive. Let's commit to still trust and praise God even when his will and his permissive will seem to lead us into dark painful places. Let us come in to give honor for our losses because through the suffering and the death of Christ, Jesus snatched the keys of the grave and hell so we can have eternal life. He fulfilled the eternal purpose for us by suffering. Certainly, we can continue to praise through our own pain. Hebrews 13 verse 15 says, Therefore, by him, let us continually offer the sacrifices of praise to God, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Let us pray. Father God, you know that we struggle with losses and we struggle with finding purposes in our pain. But we ask you today, God, that through your power, we'll be able to find these purposes. Empower us, O Holy Spirit, to give through our pain, to serve in honor of our loss, and more so, to continually give praise and worship because you, O God, are more than worthy. And thus we say, Amen and Amen.